So mill shutdown. A mill shutdown also starts by putting the igniters in. So you line up the accumulators, start the, fuel, uh, the igniter oil pump, put the row of igniters in. Then the mill speed is going to go to minimum. Then we're going to cool off the mill. So this guy goes shut. And this guy goes all the way open. And we're putting cold air only into the mill to try and cool this down to 105. So clearly coal is flammable. Tell me about the fire triangle. What are the components required for a fire? Oxygen, fuel, ignition. Right. You have to have ignition or heat. You have to have enough air and you have to have fuel. Uh, and then, uh, what does it take to get an explosion? Dispersion and confinement, right? So, this is a confined box, and you're blowing air into there with the coal power. And as long as the fuel is rich enough, then you, it, then a spark will not set it off. But if it thins out then that's when you go through a uh, an area where it's dangerous. So before we shut down the feeder and let it thin out, we got to get it cooled down so that we feel like there's not any chance of a spark causing an explosion. What you got? What are we, what's the air, the PA air at after we start up? It says 135 to start it up to get the firm. Uh, so 135 is the normal set point. I want to say somewhere around 128 is what it takes to actually start it. Um, so yeah, 130. If you're no, running normally, 135 is what you're going to be at. And we're gonna, we got to cool it down to 105. And uh, a control room operator that's trying to conserve fuel will take this set point in in the uh, manual, and he will put type in 115 and cool it down to 115 before he starts putting oil in there. Because why not? That might save you 10 minutes before it starts to shut down sequence, and that's 10 minutes of oil at 40 gallons a minute, and that'll flew the truck quite a few times. Mm -hmm. All right. So, after it cools down to 105, then the feeder stops. Well, no. Yeah, then the coal gate shuts. Colgate shuts, and then the feeder runs empty, and then there is a little flap that's riding on the coal, and that flap, when it's not riding, when it, when it runs empty and there's no coal anymore, then that tells the DCS, hey, we ran all the coal out, and uh, I'd say 75% of the time, you guys have to actually grab that thing with a pair of channel locks and tweak on it to get it to actually show, and uh, then after it gets that signal, it runs for another 45 seconds. Uh, How the cold gate actually shuts, if it shuts, should be what, about four to five minutes till we should run four minutes. Out. Four, four minutes, minutes, minutes almost built. exactly. Oh. Four minutes almost exactly. But yeah. So if, I think what you're leading towards, yeah. is if it runs six minutes and the coal hasn't run out, it's probably not gonna. This cold gate's probably not really shut. As we discussed, where the limits are wrong, on Charlie in particular, where it thinks it's shut, but it's not. All right. After the feeder shuts off, the motor on the mill runs for another five minutes, and then it shuts off, and then we continue to blow air through it, for another 10, ooh, somewhere in there Oxteen came on, I don't remember. I don't know what, what, where that step is. I don't know if that is right now while we're, when we're purging out the coal dust, or if that happens when you are when you get down to 105 but before the feeder stops. Somewhere in there, this Oxteen valve comes open. And then you continue to blow air through the whole thing for 10 minutes, make sure all your pipes are purged out good, and then the air shuts down 
and that is a good proper real stop. What will cause a mill to trip? 